Hello and welcome back to Pyrex YouTube. And today I want to talk about class methods, when to use them and give a practical example. So to be honest, I don't use it a lot. And I just um, saw so my most practical use case is to use it as an alternative constructor. But uh, Twitter is great to ask these questions. So I asked it the other day um, and asked for some more use cases. And I will link this uh, thread below in the description. Uh, and I got some great examples, right? Um, so you can read through it. But funny enough, uh, the alternative constructor case was mentioned the most. So it was nice to see that confirmed. So I'm here at my terminal and uh, let's make a simple class. We can use data classes to shortcut it a little bit so we don't have to um, do a dunder init constructor. Also, you should see a link around now for the data classes video we have. So you can also check that out. Uh, but it can do from data classes or data class, which is a constructor, data class, class person. And I want that person to have a name and an age, right? And then we should be able to create a person instance like so and print it, which would uh, print the stir method. Also have a video on wrapper versus stir, which will pop up uh, around now. And I kind of type. Okay, so we have 10, 37 years. So what if you want to have an alternative constructor where we can just give it the birth year and it will um yeah calculate the age from that right so let's say class method from birth year and a class method as opposed to an instance method takes the class as its first argument so an instance method takes self as the first first method and then you also have static method that would not take either class or self and I will do a separate video on static methods probably next week uh, because when people talk about class methods they also talk a lot about static methods and those are the two decorators you kind of want to know when you're doing OOP in Python so class and then we can give it a birth year and then we can calculate it so so we can get the age by determining what year it is now. So minus the birth year. And it might not be 100% accurate um, because, you know, if you have your birthday later or earlier in the year, that might be one off, but this is just for example's sake. And then we can make a class instance by returning class. And of course, we also need to get the name. And we can return class name age. So we get the current year minus the birth year passed in, and we return CLS or class with name and age. So we basically use the regular constructor then to make an object. But now the interface uh, has a new, nice new addition. So I can make person two is person. And that's um, the other thing we call a class method on the, um, the class name. And you already see in my autocomplete that I have this new from birth year. It's kind of nice to mirror that variable, by the way. And I can give that autocompletes as well nicely. Sarah. And yeah, what if uh, she was born in 1999? Then I expect her to be, we're in 2023, 24. So let's also print that person. But yeah, so we have the regular uh, way of making an object with a classic constructor, which is hidden. Um, again, watch that data class uh, video that all abstracts this away for us. But yeah, if we don't use a data class, it would be like this.
So, but I'm leaving at the data class, it's shorter. And uh, now we have a second way to make an object through that class method. So we can give it person. Again, the class method, we call that on the class name and it requires a name and a birth year. Let's see what that gives us. Uh, date time date has no attribute now. Date time date. Let's quickly check that. Oh, sorry, that has that's today. Yeah, okay. So it's daytime now, and it's date dot today. That was what I uh, wanted to actually use here. And Sarah indeed is uh, 24 based on uh, that calculation. So yeah, that's a practical example of a class method. So if you're more want to share, we have our search tool as uh, shown the other day, uh, I think yesterday in the short. So I can do search tip class method. And here we have two more examples. So here we can make my date from a string uh, that you can pass in a string and then it will make a date time object parsing that string. And here is actually one from the date time module uh, that uses combine to combine a date and a, a time and makes a date time object, right? So normally you would make a date time object passing in year, month, day, hour, minute, uh, but the combine class method takes a date and a time and combines them, right? And we can also look at um, the daytime module, right? So we can open daytime with Pies. Um, I got another video on shell aliases that will be linked around this segment. Um, and I need to do daytime date, for example. And I need to be in a virtual environment for this. Yeah, so here we have the date class in the standard library. And if you look for class method, um, you can make a date object from a timestamp. You can make a today date, which I used in the code. You can make a date from ordinal, from ISO format, from ISO calendar. So there's a whole bunch of class method provided in the um, date class and the same will be true for date time. So here we have from timestamp, from timestamp, UTC from timestamp now, as mentioned, UTC now, combine, I just showed from ISO format. Yeah, similar to the other one. And our STRP time, which is a really cool one, where it will uh, parse a string and convert it to a daytime. So again, all uh, examples of alternative constructors on, in this case, the daytime class. So I hope it's helpful uh, that you got a clear understanding what you can use the class method for. Uh, again, I'm not using it often, and when I do, it's for the alternative constructor use case. Uh, Twitter link below where you can see the full discussion. The tips link below as well. And thanks for watching. Tomorrow we'll be back with more Python. Cheers.